Thank you to Atodi for sponsoring today's video. We'll talk about them more later in the video and how you can have a chance to win $250 in Amazon gift cards and some prizes from Atoti. All right, so here it is. This is the scoreboard that is literally changing my life. This is how I learned how to trade Forex. It also helped me prepare for my first trading bot, which I did on live stream over here, if you want to check that out with Jake Amaral. It's helped me keep motivated and keep going as I jumped all the hoops in order to start my company. And now it's helping me on my personal finance journey and just really elevating that to the next level. If you've seen the study with Tina live streams, you have probably seen my scoreboard before because we go over this every single time. Here are some of the other scoreboards from other people, which are far more aesthetic and pretty than mine. It's helped people start and continue studying data science, study different languages like Japanese, keep a consistent workout routine, and keep posting YouTube videos. It's also helped people keep track of their school assignments, and it's even helped people prepare for interviews and finally land a job. In this video, I want to talk about what a scoreboard is, how it works and why it's so effective, and how to design your own and use it properly so you can also achieve your goals. All right, let's start with how it works. It may appear deceptively simple, but there's actually been a lot of thought and science that backs this up. I first came across this scoreboard system for my one of my favorite books called Four Disciplines of Execution, and the concept of the scoreboard and how it works goes full credit goes to them. I simply adapted it and the rest of the community adapted it as well to make it work for ourselves. So if you really want to deep dive into the research that backs it up and why it works, highly, highly recommend that you check out that book. Okay, so this is my scoreboard. The X axis over here is time and the Y axis is what you want to achieve. Then you have a goal line for the rate in which you want to achieve your goal. And finally, you have an actual progression in which you track your progress towards your goal. So the key is actually picking what goes on the Y axis. And I'll talk about this more later in the video about how to figure out what your Y axis should be. But first, now that you know what the scoreboard is, I want to talk about why it's so powerful and why it works. The short answer is simply that people play differently when you're keeping score. If you've ever played a game of ping pong like just for fun, and then you start keeping track of the score, you notice that people immediately become more competitive and more motivated to increasing their score and playing more seriously. If you've ever played card games like poker and you're just playing with like fake money, then nobody really cares that much. But once you start playing with real money and keeping score, then you know people get a lot more serious and it's a lot more fun. Just to be clear, not condoning gambling. For another example, do you or your friends play games like Dota or Starcraft or League? I don't personally play any games, but I've noticed that um, when people play just normal practice games, they're all like chill and stuff. But then once they start playing ranked games, they're just like, you know, <laughs> much more motivated to do well. What they say is oftentimes more insulting to the other person as well. Basically, they're a lot more serious. It's in our nature that once you start keeping score of things, then people take it a lot more seriously. And that's really just the simple beauty of why scoreboards work. But not all scoreboards are created equal and not all of them actually work. Perhaps you've experienced this before, it happens to me a lot. You like buy a course or something like that and they usually have some sort of tracker in which you, you know, track your progress and it kind of encourages you along the way or something like a fitness app that kind of like tracks when you're doing like certain workouts so that you're able to keep up the streak. For me, that has never actually worked very well. I actually find it becomes demotivating because if I skip a session or something like that, I actually feel more resistance going back in an app because it means I have to like confront my failure to keep up the streak, for example. So in my opinion, there has to be four key components that all have to be present for you to create a good scoreboard that actually works for you. Let's go over them one by one. Number one is that the fundamental goal that you're trying to achieve has to be wildly important. I know it sounds super obvious, but it's one of those things that if somebody doesn't point out for you, you might just not realize. Like I didn't realize. If you're not tracking something that's actually important to you, then you don't feel any sort of motivation or are compelled to actually achieve that goal, right? So for example, if you're saying that your goal is something like finishing a course on app development, it might not work for you because the idea of finishing that course isn't actually like super exciting or important to you. Instead, the actual motivation of you doing that course may be building your own app something that you have in mind and you want to actually see that in existence. So what you should be tracking is actually the progress towards building that app, not just the completion of the course. Or it's maybe if you think about it, you really just don't actually care about the thing that you think that you care about. Like for example, you might just think it's cool if you learn how to play the guitar, but then you think about it, you're like, I actually don't, like I'm, it's not like 
wildly important to me to actually play the guitar. I just think it's cool. So maybe you should choose something else to achieve that is actually important to you. Basically, focus on what actually matters and try to make it as concrete as possible and try to quantify that as much as possible. So it's super clear what your goal is. When I was learning how to trade Forex, my wildly important goal that I wanted to achieve was to become a consistently profitable trader. I don't exactly remember the number, but I think it was like to be able to return 5% month over month. So it was like very, very specific. And now while I'm learning personal finance and elevating my personal finance skills, my ultimate goal is to become financially free. And I'm not going to go into so much detail about this now, but I basically have some very, very specific criteria in which I define what is considered to be financially free to me. So focus on what actually matters, make it super concrete and quantify if possible so you know when it is that you reach your goal i just want to mention another mistake that people tend to make is that they have too many things that they consider to be wildly important and that is just not good you should simplify to just one or two i personally really just have one wildly important thing because if you have like five of them then each of them is not actually super important right the second component of a good scoreboard that actually works is for it to be actionable this is what we're going to come back to when i was talking about how to actually choose that y-axis what it is that you're trying to track there's a concept of leading my metrics and lagging metrics. Your lagging metric is the thing that you want to achieve. It's what you defined previously as that wildly important thing. But you can't achieve that directly because it's the result of your work. It's something that lags behind. You can't influence it directly. On the other hand, a leading metric is what you can influence directly. And a good leading metric is one that if you work on it, it will eventually move your lagging metric. So you're able to achieve your goal. So let me give you an example. I know this sounds like super abstract. Say like my trading example, right? My lagging metric was uh, becoming a consistently profitable trader month to month returning 5% or something like that, right? I can't directly achieve that because I don't know how to like just suddenly become that. But that leading metric, that y-axis is the number of trades that I consider month over month because I know that in order to become a consistently good trader, I put like 10 or 20 trades month over month, then I know at some point I would be able to reach that goal of becoming a consistently profitable trader. So x-axis is time, the y-axis is the number of trades that are being put per month, and the ultimate goal is to become a consistently profitable trader returning 5% month over month. So just the word over here, I actually had to change the y-axis a few times because in the beginning, I didn't realize what was the most important thing to allow me to achieve my, my goal. So that is something that you may need to tweak over time, but it's very, very powerful once you find what your y-axis should be, what your leading metric should be. And don't worry, at the end of the video, I'll give you some resources or some examples that you can see what other people have been tracking as their y-axis. I thought Atoti is a really great sponsor for today's video because they're all about analysis, visualizations, and metrics. Atoti is a free Python BI analytics platform for quants, data analysts, data scientists, and business users to collaborate better, analyze faster, and translate their data into business KPIs. A Toady Free Community Edition is a tool designed to help anyone who works with data analyze and share their findings more easily with meaningful visualizations and real-world impact. A Toady works with all Python notebooks with enhanced features in Jupyter Notebooks. Okay, now let's talk about the competition, how you can win $250 in Amazon gift cards, or if you're an honorable mention, you can get some gifts from Atoti. Atoti is holding a data dashboarding competition. In order to enter this competition, you need to construct a dashboard with Atoti using their tutorial sales data. You can submit by following Atoti and commenting on their post with a screenshot or a GIF. A GIF? A GIF. Don't judge me. I actually don't know how to say it. The competition will run from November 29th until December 10th. And winners will be contacted and announced in the week of December 13th. I'll link in the descriptions below for the link to the data site and some tutorial guides, as well as more details about the competition. If you're an aspiring data scientist or a data analyst, visualization is such a key component of what we do. And Python is one of the most widespread languages that we use. So this is definitely a good chance for you to practice your skills and also potentially win some stuff as well. So do check it out if you're interested. All right, back to the video. Okay, so the third component of what makes a good scoreboard that actually actually works is for it to be realistic. Say for like my trading scoreboard, right? I made it look like this instead. Like I work a full-time job, I do YouTube, you know, I'm also making courses on the side. Like this is just like absolutely not realistic for my time schedule. If you're not being realistic with your scoreboard, that's one of the surefire ways for you to get demotivated and to give up because you know, you just feel like you can't catch up and you just feel like you're behind. So my advice is that I'd rather you overestimate how much time and effort it's gonna take than underestimate it. And this is also something that you may need to do some trial and error on. 
but you know at some point you're going to find the cadence that works best for you okay so the fourth component of what makes a good scoreboard that actually works for you is for it to make sense to you and that you like again it's something that may sound super obvious when someone points that out to you but you might realize hey i just copied someone's template and i don't actually like it and it doesn't make any sense so then i didn't actually want to use it so you need to make a scoreboard that you like and make sense to you for me personally i like really simple scoreboards i get overwhelmed easily when there's too much stuff going on so i like being able to exactly see um, what my progress is towards my goal. And I also don't like having to update a lot of different things because that demotivates me. This is why I stick to my super vanilla scoreboard over here. You also need to make sure that the scoreboard fits what it is that you're trying to track. So this simple line graph works when you're trying to learn something or progress towards something that's incremental. Say if I wanted to track a habit and my lead metric is to work out every single day, I would probably have some sort of table similar to what this awesome scoreboard looks like. You can see that the scoreboards of other people in the study with Tina Livestream have really, really different scoreboards because they're all tracking different things and they personalize it into something that they like doing. They're all much prettier than mine and you can really see how customized it is for each person but they all follow these fundamental principles. Now you know how to make a good scoreboard but before I send you off I want to give you some advice on how to use your scoreboard. This is also the last discipline of execution in the 4DX book and it's called creating a cadence of accountability. The book recommends and I also found what works the best for me is to have some form of social accountability. So have other people around and you all keep each other accountable and it also recommends that you at least have one weekly meeting to go over these scoreboards and keep the meeting short just 15 or 20 minutes the way that we do this in the study with tina live stream community is that i live stream my study sessions uh three times a week and then after each session we go over the scoreboards and this is how we all make sure that everybody's updating their scoreboards and keep each other accountable if you're interested in being part of this live streaming community and the scoreboard community the good news is that we i think at least um mods put in the comments if I'm wrong, but I think we are accepting more people and applications to the scoreboard right now. And full credit goes to Ibrahim for creating this amazing landing page, as well as a speed run that we go through after each session. Also a huge, huge thank you to mods who are tirelessly screening through different applications and just making sure that everything is running smoothly. I'll put the links in the description that has more information about how to apply for the scoreboards and, and things like that. Um, and also you can take some inspiration from other people's scoreboards for tracking whatever it is that you would like to achieve. All right, we've come to the end of this video. I hope you found this video helpful and you feel inspired Inspired and you want to create your own scoreboard now and start using it properly so you can start achieving your goals as well. And if you're looking for some accountability, hope to see you in the study with Tina live streams. Just another reminder to check out Atodi's dashboarding competition with all the information linked below in the descriptions. Thanks again to Atoti for sponsoring this video. I will see you guys in the next video or live stream.